Hey everyone, it's Evgeny back again and yep, we are diving into more Spring AI goodness. Today we are picking up where we left off with our Hello World project from the last video. But this time we are cranking it up a notch. Instead of just basic redirect to chat GPT, we are going to tackle something a bit more real. You know, something you'd actually want to show off to your co-workers. <sighs> Influencers and content creators. First, AI started writing their posts, but Oh no, they still have to think of what to ask ChatGPT. Let's enter step two. We will think for them now, freeing them up for more creative work. All right, and here's the big idea. We are building a tool to help all those creative souls out there craft social media posts like pros. And here is how it works. Imagine a content creator stumbles upon a killer article that would make for a perfect Facebook post. They send a link to our service, choose their audience, select the platform, well, Facebook in this case, and boom! Our tools spill out a polished post tailored to their audience and ready to go live. Pretty cool, right? But enough talk. Let's get to coding and make this thing real. All right. First things first, we need a new endpoint. So here's what we'll do. We'll copy an existing method. And let's give this method a name. What about uh, create new post? All right, let's fire it up and see how it runs, shall we? And we are going to stick to our old uh, examples HTML from the previous lesson. But we need to modify the post because now the call is a bit different. All right, it's still here and it still gives us the same result. Why? Because we have the same prompt, right? But, but we, need to, we need to modify prompt. So what should our prompt look like? I have prepared one for you that fits perfectly for our scenario, so let me go ahead and create it here. And here we have it. You're a helpful content creator who specializes in writing entertaining posts for various social media platforms and you create content ensuring it's visually appearing and includes an inspiration message. And while creating content, you should do the emojis and you have to summarize the article, which you can find on this link. At this is just an example I found recently, and create a post from it. And this post should be understandable by an audience who are preschool in this case and should be formatted for Instagram. And we won't dive into the details of how we crafted this prompt just yet. If you're curious about the nitty gritty, check out our course AI for Developers 101 series right here on this channel. Don't worry, I'll drop the link in the description below. But now, let's take this prompt and insert it into our API call. But first, we need to mesh it into one clear uh, string line. We need to keep things JSON-friendly, and this is the way how JSON works. All right, let's give it a try again and see how it works. So this time you can see post is a bit different, right? And we have room, room, hey little friends, did you know that sound really smart? A Tesla named Franz has been dreaming about a super cool car. All right, and we got what we need, right? The Instagram post is created and ready to publish. But here's the question, what's the kicker? Why do we even need our service for this? I mean, couldn't we just hop over to chat GPT, throw the same prompt in and be done with it? We wouldn't even need to mess with all this one-liner formatting, right? So how do we boost the value of our app? We hide our secret sauce from the user. Now, what info do we really need from the user? And let me go back to the original. So what info do we really need from it? Uh, in other words, what stays the same in the prompt that we can automate and what changes with each post? And obviously, we need the user to provide three pieces of information here, right? The article link, the social media, which is Instagram in this case, and the audience. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So, what do we need to trigger? 
First off, let's adjust the parameters of our endpoint. We'll create a new class and let's call it post params. And this class will handle all the data we need from the user. In the class, we, we would need three fields. The link, uh, let me just start typing. The platform and the audience. And to keep things simple, let's make them all plain old strings. So no need to overcomplicate things here. And just like that, our endpoint will now take this uh, post params object as a parameter. And now we just need to update the body of our method. So it's time to refactor it so it works with our new param objects. And next, we have to encapsulate our three parameters into the prompt. Let's call it request. So here we have in order, the first was link. Then it's a social media platform. And the last, but the most important one was audience. And finally, we pass our pretty formatted prompt into the user method. So far, so good, right? But now we need to tweak our examples HTTP to reflect these changes. Something like that, right? Let's fire it and check how everything is running. But we need to restart our service again. Okay, up and running. And I'm triggering this one. All right, everything's working perfectly, just how we planned it. Our service is up and running and now it's time, well, hmm, now it's time probably to start thinking about how to scale it up and of course the most important question, which monetization model to roll with. But let's save that for another day and right now let's jump back into the code and see if there is anything we can optimize. First thing that uh, worries me a bit, we use string format to enrich our prompt with parameters. Sure it works, but it's way too easy to trip over those pesky conversions. I mean, all these uh, percentage s Java style old way placeholders that define the type and format. And now, uh, can we use placeholders in a more traditional sense here? Well, absolutely. Spring AI even provides a special object to help construct prompts with placeholders. So let's make the switch and tidy things up a bit. All right, so now having prompt template, we can create a real prompt in region prompt template with the placeholders. I mean, create for that, and those placeholders should be filled in. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to provide all those as a map, which represents kind of JSON. And so having having this, uh, oh no, we don't have it yet. So having this prompt, if you take a look at the parameters, uh, we can pass it here and voila, we have it. So let's give it another try and check if everything is still working. I'm restarting the application. And I'm going to my examples HTTP and trigger the same request. All right, it's still there. Everything is fine. So everything's still running smoothly. Let's keep pushing forward. Now what else needs fixing here? If you've been following our AI for Developers 101 course on this channel, you might already know the answer. And if you missed it, 
No worries, go check it out, it's right here on the channel. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. But back to the issuer, what is it? Well, we've got code right here, which as developers we owe, but then we've got the prompt, which is more in the realm of a system analyst or maybe business expert, but definitely it's not us. And right now it's all mashed together in one place. See? And that's just messy, so let's clean things up. What's the idea? We move our prompt into a separate file, one that an analyst or maybe tester can work with without getting lost in our code, which, well, let's be honest, they probably wouldn't understand anyway. In this way, we're going to create a little directory or folder of prompts all grouped together. So let's create a folder in our resources to start correcting all our prompts. Well, next, we create a file to hold our prompt and let's call it post prompt. Well, and next up, how do we load this prompt? For that, we'll use Spring's built-in functionality for managing external resources. And here's how it's working. Uh, let's call it uh, post prompt. So we defined our post prompt resource, but how should we initialize it? And we're using uh, value annotation from Spring for that. And here we are saying, and we are putting here our post prompt. ST. By the way, I made a typo here. So I won't go into the details about uh, what this resource class, which is from Spring Core AI, or for example, how the annotation value works. There are these are basic concepts in Spring and Spring Boot. And if you want to to learn more, I'll I'll leave links to the Spring and Spring Boot guidance in the description. Make sure to check them out. But now back to our task. So let's assume our resource is initialized correctly when the application starts. So how do we pass it into the prompt template? Well, it's simple. If you take a look at how else we can initialize prompt template, like this one, we can see that there is another option that takes the resource itself. So let's make that change. Now let's test it to make sure our app still works as expected. I have to restart it again. And once it's up and running, which is now, I'm going to I'm going to retrigger the same request again. And as you can see, everything works perfectly and our service is ready to go. The user just needs to provide the link platform like few parameters and boom, the social media post is generated ready for action. And that's it for today's session. I hope you found something new or interesting to take away from this. And once again, we are not diving into LM theory in these videos, but if you are confused about any of it, I highly recommend checking out our course AI for Developers 101 right here on this channel. I'll give link in the description. And also, if you are feeling unsure about how Spring Boot works, why certain annotations are needed, or how beans may be are initialized, then take a look at the books I've mentioned in the description. And I'm Evgeny, don't forget to subscribe, to hit that like button and leave your comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. All right, let me show my like button trick, but in this time in silence mode. So, ah, it's still working. And that's it for now. See you next time. Bye-bye.